o'clock. It's the 11th of October, 2023. John's computer is playing up. What's happening, John? <laughs> Nothing. It's just very slow. And uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's doing things that it shouldn't at times that it shouldn't. <laughs> I'm surprised you haven't got super fast high speed broadband in that penthouse flat of yours in London overlooking the Thames. Absolutely. No, I've got yeah. rural broadband. Rural. Is it satellite or something? Uh, no. Do you know what? Um, I look at this, which is quite annoying. I did tweet out today, right? I said, uh, look at this. I said, the AIM all share has been oversold for like seven sessions. And now it's perked up. It hasn't. It's gone back into oversold position territory <laughs> again. It hasn't managed to do. Look at that. It hasn't managed to do two days on the bounce since back in what 15th, 14th, what do you mean? A month, a month since we had two up days. That's ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah. Look at those down days on AIM all share. We're still in oversold territory. If you zoom out, you know, we're in a downtrend. So oversold and bouncing back into uh, not oversold is, is not a buying indicator. It's just maybe it's it's stopped, but we're going back into it. So it, it's bad. But um, the title today is How to Avoid a Profit Warning. Have you noticed? There seems to be more and more profit warnings coming out. And we're covering a few today. There's been like mm. Travis Perkins, uh, in fact, Inarakua, Watkins Jones, and the page group we talked about yesterday was recruitment. And um, this is largely, you know, I, I don't know how long this cycle lasts for, but it's going to be a while. But it is the bottom of the cycle. When you get lots of companies coming out with profit warnings, it shows that everyone's tightening their belts, which is not a bad thing for inflation, of course, because, you know, if people not spending, then demand's not there. So uh, prices are not going to go up. But yeah. um, let's just have a look at the old. Um, uh, indices here by all means don't forget if you haven't subscribed do it now hit that subscribe button it's a special features if you're subscribed <laughs> uh, comment like and share as well if you would uh, look at that fags they're up John yeah fags are up today BP share BT group let's see utilities Defen uh, defensives basically defensives yes yeah uh, on the on the big big stocks fallers pretty much howden's uh you know falling Ooh. in sympathy oh uh, yeah yeah this, yeah this is the travis um, perkins, travis perkins uh, kingfisher as well as is, is there is that being q and stuff like that uh j sports next apparently are buying fat face uh they just i, mean, I saw I announced from sky uh, fat face is a brand, by the way, not just buying somebody who's got a fat face. <laughs> yeah, so it's always puzzled me, fat face. Yeah, it's puzzled me how, he, how it continues to exist. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But but right, and uh, comments, by all means, comments. Uh, L Saint, you have the prize for first commentator on the show today. Um, he says, liking the look of SDG, Samson's SDG. design. And, and yeah, you yeah, I looked at that this morning. Did, yeah, I did yeah, have a look at it. Let's have a look. So, so um, Let's scroll down. Where is it? You did that. Uh, there we are. Sanson's yeah. boost. I mean, it, now, explain what they do because you do the post stuff in it, essentially. Uh, yeah, wallpaper, wallpaper and fabric. Um, they, yeah, Morris, William Morris is their sort of um, major brand, you know, sort of heritage wallpaper at the sort of top end of the market. Although they've got some sort of licensing deals now that they've done with Next again, funny enough, and uh, Sainsbury's. Um, the Sainsbury's owns Habitat, uh, which they're, they're licensing. Um, uh, their, their designs too, and also two the, the sort of more budget brand at the same speed. So yeah, it's more wallpaper basically, um, and uh, and post fabric. Okay, so uh, and um, so what did they come up with? Them? Is it their? It's it's uh, half years. Interim, um, interim. Yeah, half year okay, results. Okay. But they're I mean they weren't. I mean they're not they're not stellar. You know, there's there's a bit of profit growth, which is mainly being eaten out of the US. And uh, I just yeah. say these licensing deals. You know, licensing deals are great. Um, because you know there's not a lot of cost involved in delivering them, so so you know very very high margin, uh, and that's that's actually one of the strategic focuses uh, that that, that, that uh, the group's going to be sort of pursuing going forward, uh, along with North America, where where it's uh, it's got a quite a big deal there with a company whose name I now forget. Um, oh, what was it called? Can't remember. You'll see it down there. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't matter. Uh, and uh, yeah, so the US is um, is growing nicely. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, and it, it, it's targeting growth there. And as I say, licensing is, uh, it says there's quite a few um, there we uh, go. quality leads in the pipeline. Um, yeah. Now, always look, there's a, we, we keep you know, iterate, reiterating this, uh, always look at the outlook. That's what's to come, mm. hopefully, what's been happening more recently. You know, the results can be three, six months out of date, pretty much, because uh, it's got historic results. Um, but they say uh, they focus in the US uh, cost series, uh, as we enter key autumn selling period, we are encouraged by the high level of sampling from recent product launches yeah. by our pipeline of licensed options by the strength of our balance. Therefore, yeah. the board expect yeah. fully I mean, the, one thing, the, the one thing I would say about Sanderson today is that the UK market looks pretty soggy. 
Um, yeah, 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 yeah. And so they've yeah. been uh, they've been uh, sort of focusing on cost reductions in in the UK. Sort of optimistic. There's some signs from the trade that, that the new range is going down well. But but yeah, I mean, sort of if we're talking about Travis Perkins sort of general general sort of slow down in in home improvement type stuff, it's it's showing in these results as well. So so you know I, you, we're not seeing stellar growth here, but it's a, it's a steady performance really. And I do okay. like the company. Yeah, yeah. Well, oddly, um, so the title here is "There's a lot of profit warnings coming." How to avoid a profit warning? Now, I've got I've got a, a simplistic answer to that. Uh, but if you have any suggestions, by all means, put it in the comments. Look at this. Do you remember we talked about Sansa's design on that podcast we did about you know filters yeah. and screeners? Yeah, now, it was, as you can see there. We talked about it. They had a series of higher lows, which is very good. Higher highs, higher lows. Essentially, what that means is people are paying more up for the price, the share price. People are prepared to pay more. And all of a sudden, even after that next deal they announced, John, it sort of dipped off. And look at that. Mm. It broke down that channel here. And um, it broke down. So a series of higher lows, broken. And then all of a sudden, it fell off a cliff a little bit. It went from yeah. 128 to one quid. Uh, June 23rd, what did they come out with then? Um, I'm just wondering if there's anything they came out with in June. For a trading update, you'd expect. Um, or tr- uh, AGM statement, yeah. Yeah, okay. so there would okay. have been some trading news in there. <clears throat> okay. And, uh, 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 yeah, it would have, would have said that basically the UK is, uh, is that's, weak. Yeah, that's why it's always good to mm. um, look at a chart because if it breaks down there, and uh, you know, lower. but now it's, it's formed this almost this, this base here where, where it was, you know, before it started the rally, you know, almost like this, this one quid level, mm. you know. So it, it broke up, as you can see, they, they broke the pound, broke down, then broke up again. And that there is almost has to form a new base now. But that was a you, you thought that was a definite uptrend there, but um, anyway, it, it fell out. But uh, yeah. what's 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 the, what's the what's the um PE on these? Is it they're cheap? Oh, let's have a look. What? Um, let's have a look. I haven't actually looked, to be honest. Uh, eight times forecast earnings. I mean, cheap, cheap, yeah. cheap, cheap. Uh, yeah. I haven't looked at the balance sheet. I should have looked at the balance sheet. But the balance sheet is they've got cash on the balance okay, sheet. Good. Yeah, yeah. So, you um, know, nice, nice company. Um, not exactly blowing the lights out on a sort of growth perspective at the moment, but you know, holding its own in a tough market okay, and with some good, um, good plans for growth in the future. Yeah, Matthew says uh, Page Group. Yeah, we did mention them yesterday, just as a read across, like you say, from um, Robert Walters. Uh, seems ominous for the sector, keen to buy the sector lower, more pain ahead. That's why, exactly, I, I genuinely think, keep an eye on sectors, on businesses that have traditionally done very well, but they're having a tough time. Mm. And it's not company specific, it's sector specific. And that's one of the things I say you should look at when trying to avoid, you know, sort of um, profit warnings. Uh, I think it's you know, economy wide, you know, I, think, I yeah. think this is sort of what we're seeing sort of filtering through the market as a whole. Yeah, but that's um, what I say. There are sectors out there, though, that literally, you know, will still do okay. I mean, I think if, if, you, if you are, you know, consumer facing, mm. it's going to be hard. It's, I mean, because people are tightening the bells. And if you're a company that's consumer facing that has debt, it's going to be doubly as hard because you have to pay the debt. The costs are going up on the one end. People are not buying on the other end. Demand is, is down. So it's really hard. <coughs> so, um, yeah, page. <coughs> Excuse says, me. Yeah. Are they down as well? They're there... down. They're down about five percent, four and a half percent today. Um, yeah, I just, I just wouldn't, I wouldn't touch recruiters at the moment. I would. You know, when, you, when you think, when you think yeah. about the fact, you know, we've had very strong employment, um, you know, both both here and and in the US, mm-hmm. which are which are sort of key markets for for companies like Page, um, and you know, where do you go from you know near full employment? Yeah. Um, particularly when you you know you've got a series of. Of, uh, of monetary tightening, interest rate, you know, rises, you know, it, 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 things designed to slow the economy down. You, you would expect to see a slump in recruitment. And I don't know that it was factored in. Yeah. Um, well, it's, it's an odd thing here. So, I mean, there's a story about this. Um, I don't know about the headline. I've cut them out, but they say it could be slowing down because there's no signs of that really. But British employers have cut their job vacancies for the first time in more than two and a half years. Mm. Now, that's a big deal, isn't it? In September, and reduced their hiring again, uh, a recruiters industry body said Wednesday, adding to us signs of a cooling in the labour market. I, I would say uh, so. Don't... But this is the data the Bank of England wants, essentially. If they see this, they see less wage um, inflation happening. And that's one of the key stats they look at, because wage inflation has been quite strong, hasn't it? And so this, you know, uh, it's this may... Mm. Uh, well, we, we sort of know we had peak rates pretty much, but this is another sort of nail in the coffin uh, to rates going up even further. Yeah, so it's yeah. A good read across to that. Just just looking back at that page group statement, there's another interesting thing in there, which is that yeah. uh, temporary 
recruitment is outpacing permanent recruitment. Yeah, quite significantly, and that, that, that kind of that's um, that's indicative of, of you know the sort of business confidence, not yeah. confident enough to take on permanent staff. So, yeah. you know, when they do require require headcount, you know, it's being done on a sort of flexible, more flexible basis. Yeah, and obviously yeah. that's worth less to pay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so my thoughts is, um, uh, Michael, when are you chaps getting into a vector? Never. <laughs> <laughs> it's too speculative for me. Uh, so, so my, my thought is this, right? How to avoid a profit warning? Because if you look at what we've seen today, before, if we go to the front page of a box, right? You see all these companies that have been sort of, uh, uh, you know, hammered. This is the fallers here. Some of the hammered fallers. Um, in Iraq, were there? It's kind of next yes. yesterday at quarter past three. They came up with that. I think. Um, also, Tra TPK Travis Perkins. Now, Travis Perkins is a bit of a you know bellwether, isn't it? Really, for the building uh, building industry because it's. Oh, in fact, I put it in here because of course they supply builders and all that stuff. But they said here, look at this. Uh, challenging market conditions persist with significant commodity product deflation impacting on margins. For the, uh, what do they say there? Um, has continued to experience challenging market conditions. Announced. But they also said, whilst third quarter trading started as expected in the merchandising segment, S September saw a notable deterioration in market activity. So that's September. That's very, you know, near it's terms of... Uh, curious. You know, current, it's almost current. So revenues of 3.4% lower year on year. And and I think 1.8% 1, 1. was, was the dip on... Um, on the year but uh yeah, yeah it's curious uh, a curious statement i mean it does you know it does sort of follow what, what from what we've heard from the house building sector um you know construction activity is uh is, is contracting um quite significantly mm. you know we know that the that, you know the build um targets for, for house builders are are much lower than they were last year um so so not a surprise there what is interesting but what's surprising um, is that they're talking about this deflationary pressures on commodity products. And, you know, this suggests to me, if you remember, over the last couple of years, we saw quite significant, um, you know, materials uh, cost inflation, you know, mm -hmm. timber, you know, yeah. cement, plasterboard, whatever it was, everything went through the yeah. roof. Yeah. So I'm wondering whether they've had to, they've bought in stock at elevated prices to ensure yeah. stock. And now the market's basically frozen up and they're stuck yeah. with stock at prices that they've paid. Uh, a lot more than the market will now bear. So, yeah, so they're taking a gonna, massive margin quite, hit. Yeah, that's quite worrying because going mm, forward, to mm. unwind that inventory you know, at a higher cost, it will take a while. And so this, I, so that's why falling, try, uh, falling knife trades never pay off because you tend to find that you may have a little bounce, uh, but companies that are generating revenue, as, you know, it, profit warnings aren't a one-off thing, are they? They tend to say you come in threes, you know? It takes that long to wash out of the system. Mm. And that's why, again, look at charts. I mean, in fact, the entire market seems to have a rally. From the start of last year, we were all, all oversold. It all rallied. And you can see there, Travis Perkins came back down. It didn't last long. Broke 200 million movie hours, came back down. Well, and I mean, everything, everything started to take off from October. You know, we had the big bounce over in the US as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, I think we said at the time, you know, it, it was sort of, uh, it needed a dose of reality, you think, which is what yeah. I think we're now getting. Yeah. Um, um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it could, the only good news here is that if you've got a construction project you're about to kick off, you know, home improvement or whatever, everything's got a bit cheaper. Woohoo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if you didn't mention in fact, that's good there. So it's, it's, it's a break it up there. Oh, it's Come back down today. It's good to look on the chart. Uh, the reason why I oh, get into VACT, I've got it's a cracking one... company. It's a cracking company. Yeah. Don't get me yeah. wrong, but I just, you know, it's, 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 it's not a sector that I'm, I'm comfortable investing in. Yeah. Uh, the reason why I won't get into VACT is uh, you know, as far as, you know, clinical trials, pre revenue companies mm, like that, mm. biotech pharma, I have one, Destiny Pharma. Uh, I think there's massive upside in that. And I don't want to overexpose that sector. And and so, you know, that's why I've got that. So, um, you know, if you look yeah, at even broker yeah. targets to Destiny Pharma, I mean, in fact, Destiny's rallied strongly from over sole position. It's, it's holding nicely. Um, I didn't realize this. On our filters now, John, you can look for um, director, director sort of. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, buys. yeah. We, so we, we I, try to make it as granular as possible. So that you know, there's a. So if you go um, to the filters, there's um so filters there. Uh, management changes and directed dealing. I was looking for directed. I missed it. So that's worth looking at. So, so you can see the directors buying. They do think. Yeah, well, Oxford. Uh, oh, that's not that's OBD. Isn't it? But you can see also, all... Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, you know, we have to sort of bundle them up a little bit because otherwise you'd have an, an enormous list. <laughs> the amount of tags yeah. that you get on the, uh, the LSE um, RNS dates is massive. So, so there is a bit of bundling, but, um, but you know. Oh, yeah, this, is what I'm, this is what I'm looking for there. 
So uh, the, the CEO bought some Destiny's Farm yesterday. Mm. Um, here we are. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's up to there actually. But um, yeah, so uh, let's go to the front page. Check out what's happening there. Uh, so who's this, John? You, you interviewed someone. Uh, where is it? Substrate AI. Yeah, yeah. There's been uh, been a bit of a delay them coming to market, but they're they're finally uh, listed on Acquis. It's, it's a Spanish Aquis. company. Okay. Yeah, it's a Spanish company. Oh, I'm and... stop the I'm gonna stop the video. It's, it's no, I don't know. You better turn it off quickly. Uh, it's a Spanish company. Uh, it's really listed in Spain, uh, and what they what they so they haven't raised any new money. They just want access to the UK market, the UK investor pool, uh, and also the talent that's in the AI industry uh, in in the UK. So it's, you know, it's kind of a shop window. And uh, what they do is they they basically buy companies uh, across a range of sort of vertical industries. Uh, one of which is say pet care, for example, veterinary care, yeah. and uh, and then they apply AI, their own AI technology, to it. Um, thereby making those those companies more efficient. More efficient. Uh, so what they're doing is basically using technology to squeeze value out of, com- uh, uh, of companies that they acquire. Um, so in that sense, they're a holding company um, just to make them more profitable. And I think it's a, okay. it's a sensible strategy. Yeah. Okay. Um, so someone's asked there. I, to be honest, I don't know Forterra. Uh, I don't Bricks. Know uh, yeah. What do you know about uh, Forterra? So I know. came up with a, a trading statement um, Q3. And they did say the signs of market improvement seen in May and June did not continue into the second half. Again, you're seeing this down 5%. Yeah. Um, any outlook? Uh, no, as we said, this, we said this, yeah, this results. Brutal. It's brutal. Yeah. You know, if you're in the building materials trade, it's brutal um, a, at, a, at the moment. The, yeah. Uh, Fort. Let's look at the chart on Fort. Um, uh, so let me drag that across. Uh, but we did, I did write something about it might not have been before it might be Mitchell Mash uh, that I wrote about a little while back. But, you know, we we were seeing, um, let's have a look, because uh, it might be up on the site. Uh, there we are. Look at the chart there. So you see, I mean, it, it tried to have a break there back in sort of uh, May 2022. Uh, rose above it, came back a little, but now way below, you know, 20 with the average. It's in a downtrend. So I'd, I'd be wary of that. Uh, and, uh, you know, you want to see some higher highs, higher yeah. lows. Uh, you know, at least go back above, you know, 155 to start off with. In fact, this level here, pretty much, you can see, you know, a, a nice bit of support at 160. And, and so it's broken down below that, as you can see. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, I, I did, and I'm, sorry, I'm talking really sorry. This, 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 this is why charts are important. Look at this. Look at these series of almost support levels. It's broken down, um, you know, again, twice now. And now it's in a new trading range. And that's mm. why buying the dip does not work. Listen now, if you like a company, do your fundamental research. If you think it's good value, good. In fact, someone said yesterday, who was it? Someone said, um, uh, uh, someone said, we talked about growth and value. And uh, it was Convergy. Uh, said value is better than growth. Then you need a bit uh, of both. You need both. You need good value and growth, not just, not just yeah. value. Yeah. But I mean, um, and so this is why, you know, do your fundamental research, then get to know charts because it is money flow. And you don't know who's buying and selling, but a chart tells you that pretty much. And uh, if it starts creeping you know, a series of higher highs, higher lows, you know there's net demand for the shares. Yeah. That there, of course, you don't know. You could say, oh, I'll buy now and I'll, I'll, I'll average down. You can do that for the next. We've been in an averaging down now uh, situation for two years. You'd go bankrupt if you kept doing that. You've got to change the strategy. In, in the bull market, I wasn't that. I'd buy the dip on companies. I, I, I liked, I, you know, if they had a little dip, I'd buy it. In this environment, I haven't. Uh, I, I'm just sitting on, you know, a nice bit of cash there. And I, if companies I like come up with operational updates that are good and positive, uh, and uh, the chart is good, I'll, I'll buy some more. But I'm not yeah. buying any dips. A dip, it's not a dip. It's a downtrend in a bear market. Okay, different thing. Get to know that honestly, and you will. It, it's been very painful for me the last two years, but I've stopped buying any dips in the last year or so. It's just, um, you know, it's, it it doesn't work. Mm. Or well, that trade doesn't work. Yeah, um, I just, uh, just sort of going back to to, to Pulterra, There were three yeah. brickmakers in the UK. There's, there's um, oh, I said listed Mitchell brickmakers, Mitchell Mersh, and then Ibstock was the one I wrote about. Which I oh find. yeah, Ibstock. Yeah, uh, yeah. Back in, uh, they had an update back in August. Um, you know, and and, and what I said there is, you know, basically the whole the whole sector's batting down the hatches. Um, yeah. so yeah, Again, not that, a surprise that yeah, this is so- this is happened today. Similar chart, look, uh, Ibstock pretty much. I know um, Michaelmas as well, uh, MBH. Like I said, you know, it'll take a while for the kicking. Again, that's dropped again. Yeah. But, you know, don't go early on anything. In fact, Paul bought some of these uh, based on value. But so value can keep becoming more compelling 
the more the economy slows down, the value will get more competitive. Well, they come, they come up with results. Be anyway. careful. Oh, in fact, yeah, it, 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 it isn't that competitive actually because they come up with results and the profit's gone down. So the PE stays the same or gets worse, you know? That's what they call a value trap. Yeah, exactly. So um, um, the other the other one in the sector that's sort of somewhat similar is Marshall's. It's a uh, sort yeah, of block paving. Marshall, what was that other thing? So, so bricks, um, something in bricks, uh, tiny, no, uh, how was it called? Uh, uh, brick, brickability. Brickability, what does that do? Is that the same? Well, sure, actually, they they had an update. I didn't look at it. Um, yeah, brickability again. Look at that. Oh, build it, building okay. materials. Yeah. Uh, you know, all the merchants. You, you know, you got a lot of merchant tri- merchanting uh, listed merchant companies. Yeah, real, real tough sector. Yeah, they came up with a trip again, and uh, you know, exactly the sector is really hard. Um, it's funny enough that, that this one probably looks best a lot. <laughs> is it? Yeah. But that's do you know what? This is what I said about sectors. You know, sometimes. Pick the best one in the sector, because but they will still be hammered. Mm. But on the rebound, they'll obviously rebound faster. It's like you know, in leisure sector, all companies in leisure sector be hammered. I think one of the best in that area is like XP Factory because it's not really traditional leisure, or and uh, it's growing very quickly. And mm. so you know, but it, it's still getting hammered. It's, well, it's not going to hammer. The share price is going nowhere, but it should be rising really. And uh, it's not because you know sector sentiment is so low. Been kicked to the curb with the rest of them, and but this um, is uh, this is why... this is useful though. So what you know, if you look at that, the acquisition there that's made Topic, uh, it's cladding. So you know you've got uh, you've got a whole you know raft of buildings that that need to be um, updated because obviously the cladding issue that we had as a you know as a consequence of the, the Grenfell disaster. Um, so so you know what it's done is found itself a sweet spot, which is probably going to be a little bit more insulated. Uh, from from the sort of broad sector weakness, then you know, sort of straight brick makers, straight building material mm-hmm. supplies. So so yeah, I mean, so look look for those more defensive elements if you are going for a sector like this. It might, might might be where you find some sort of real value rather than the value traps. Yeah, here's a good um, um, tip here. Riff Sofpoff uh, says own everything, eat fruit every time there's a profit warning, and you're close to your five a day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true there. Uh, in this in this uh, in this environment, you'd be overdosing on fruit. I think uh, Paul says property orders can be a buying opportunity if you're careful and there's no going concern risk. You don't want to be holding the shares prior to profit warning. Yeah, I, I, in this market, honestly, this is uh, this is my John. Here's my tip to avoid a profit warning. Okay, don't invest in, now in the bull market. You you pre guess results. You probably take a position before results came out. I'd say in this market. Do not do that. Basically, wait until you get more information on the company. Like I said, today is a good example. Travis Perkins, all those companies come up with profit warnings. If you'd known that before you'd invested, you wouldn't go in. And now afterwards, when you get more information, okay, um, sit back. So basically, in a, in a, in a bull market, you, you can sort of pre-guess and have a go at it and jump in. And even if it, even if it doesn't exceed the expectations, it won't sell off that much. In a, in a bear market, if they don't sort of meet uh, or exceed they get hammered, you know. And it's just, even big companies will take like a ten percent hit, yeah. but smaller companies can drop fifty percent. In fact, the biggest the, the, the biggest fall of today on on uh, on on Vox. If we scroll down, uh, let me just bring this up. Is Enerakua? Yes, it's um. Uh, in fact, I don't know what that is. I, I did look into that, but Enerakua down fifty eight percent. Okay. And uh, they have come up with a couple of sort of profit warnings, and they ch- and I was sitting on the side, and I had these one of, one of my ideas. Again, mm-hmm. This could be a good investment, uh, if it, it, but I waited, I waited, I waited. And let's see what the results are like, because uh, they did come up with the trading watch. And look at that; they listed back on the bull market of twenty twenty one at two eighty a share. They're now thirty eight <coughs> pence, uh, and the market cap, which is crazy, really, the market cap is like what twelve million. And if you look at um, you know what they're saying. They're going to be doing 26 million top line for the half year, uh, but it's only increased seven percent. But they do say scrolling down here, um, there's been a, a number of. In fact, I've brought it up here. So where's it by? Uh, here we are. Uh, there we go. However, is, is that big? However, in the middle, there we are. Look at this. However, uh oh, right in the middle of the again. Go to the outlook. Always the most important in this. Uh, however, following our clients' half year budget reviews in September. We have been approached regarding the phasing of work mm. on a prudent basis. Granted, that there will be a rephasing of work to meet the any anything. Basically, it's going to impact twenty twenty four and twenty twenty five pretty much knock on impacts. Um, so, it's a this, bit it, budgets are tight. You know, government that's a government yeah. uh, contract. Yeah. So you know, but budgets are tight. Yeah. Um, 
I mean, it well, it, from... I think I, it's true though. It doesn't, it, you know, it doesn't change the fact that you know the these these kind of systems aren't are required. Um, it's just you know when, when they can be paid for. So this work, as they say, it's not gone away. It's it's just coming further down the track. There we are. There we are. Look at that. As a result of these challenges and anticipated delays, everyone's delaying. And you understand this, is mm. a, 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 even government bodies and local authorities, even they're doing it, you know. Uh, the, country's, put, um, the country's in a mess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, of course. The well, 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 has found itself right in the middle of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you've got, you've got, also, you've got, does the other Rishi change the rules on, he tried to get to that water thing, didn't he? That water, I don't know what it was. Oh, the ne- to, ne- uh, nutrient net, neutrality. Yeah, yeah neutrality. Try get, which has hit them as well because they do water yep. as well as um, heat and pumps. But we expect our revenues for uh, profit for 20 people to be substantially, you hate that, we use slightly below, but substantially or materially below market expectations. That's yeah, why it's down yeah. 58%. Today, but this is a company I'm keeping an eye on, and literally, I, I, as again, what I, what I do with that is literally, I, I will. It came close there, though, but I'll put an alert on the 50-day moving average when it crosses that. I'll keep an eye on it then. But yeah, again, I like, I like the results. company. Yeah, I do. <laughs> it's a really good company. It's got really good technology. I, I like the management. Spoke to it a couple of times. You know, it's it's yeah. it's just as I say, it's found itself in the, right in the middle of this, this political maelstrom and it's very unfortunate i well, i feel still, i feel I mean, for the company uh, and its shareholders because this is you know yeah. it's, it's, it's not execution it's not that they've done anything wrong this is a, yeah. this is just yeah the things the market has moved away from them in a, in a strange way well, it hasn't even moved away from them it's just you know it's just it's really it's i say very unfortunate yeah and i i, I think if you look at it are they, are they now gonna be profitable anyway for the next couple of years i mean the profits dropped by a lot but on a 12 million market cap, you go look at this and think if they're going to be profitable and they've got a top line of like, if they can improve that margin, I assume they will be doing cost cuttings. If they're doing uh, what 50 million top line and they are 12 million market cap, even like, you know, a, a, even a 10% EBITDA is decent. Mm. You know, sort of uh, 10% margin EBITDA is decent. So um, you got, it's worth one, definitely one worth looking at, but I, I wouldn't get anywhere near it until I see some more information. Uh, trading up in a couple of months' time, and that's how you look. It, it took me took months, not weeks, to jump in. You know, it'll have little rallies. It had a rally here, and I was watching it. Thought, oh, hang on, what's happening here? And then all of a sudden, it fell off and come back down. I, I wasn't convinced because it didn't break previous highs here. And I thought, no, it's not. And it just fell off a cliff. So, um, yeah, you know, uh, wait, wait for results. You've got plenty of time in, in a bear market. You have plenty of time to do a search, fundamental research. Wait for results and coming. Don't jump in before results. That's the worst thing you do. If you get all oh, results are out next week, and jump in now. You know, don't, yeah. don't do that. It's, I mean, usually results they sort of fairly telegraphed because you've had a trading update. It's, it's yeah. the, the fact that you've got the out. You know, it's where it's the outlook statement that's causing causing the problems in results season this time. Yeah. Um, yeah. One other thing. I mean, p- p- as far as portfolio management, I'm I'm happy because I've got a uh, kind of di- dividend fund, and it covers the big caps. I don't mind that going down, literally, because it's paying about 6% dividend. And uh, I know it'll pull back eventually. FTSE 250, 100 companies always tend to recover uh, over a period. So, but what do you think I'll say about an accurate... Yeah. Sorry, just sorry. Go sorry. On, go on. No, it's just, I'm just looking at cash. You know, it had a cash inflow in the period yeah. as well, yeah. you know, and it's it's somewhere in a debt position. It's somewhere in working capital. Yes. So, yeah, that's what I was know. thinking exactly. I said they've gone from net debt because that was the worry last time. The, the, um, you know, there's the, the sort of uh, cash cycles so mm. lengthening and they had to take on some debt. Uh, but they said this will come back in. Uh, this will unwind the debt position and they'll start being cash inflow. And um, in fact, we scroll down. Uh, yeah. Um, so these are like 24, uh, some EBITDA, yeah, look at that. It's, it's quite narrow, that EBITDA margin there. Um, yeah, yeah. The margin's gone down, taking a hit, uh, operating profit. It's not losing a lot, though. It's like uh, cash of 5.6. So they are. they've got a bit of debt. So so essentially... You know, net cash is half a million, net cash, basically. Yeah, half a million, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that was that's from uh, uh, 0.2 million at the end of end of its last full year. Yeah, look at that. The cash net. So this in this cycle from operating activities, you know, 4.9 million. It's, it's, I, I think they're in the right space. So they are, are in renewables, you know, heat pumps, yeah. uh, water usage. I think this could be a very good recovery play, but, you know. At some markets, point, definitely. Yeah. I've, I've got my eye on this one. In, the, in, in these markets, you can take your time. You can, honestly. Um, mm. so you, you, can, you can sell off for longer than you think. You keep going down for longer than you think. Um, okay, let's, uh, uh, what's what's happening here? Sanderson is, is most followed. There we are. Um, Baron Oil, most read. Plan changes to appraisal well location. Ooh, but it's gone down a bit on that. Not a lot. I'm not, not lot. that uh, happy with that. Um, well, uh, 
power metals, significant uranium. There's a lot of, I can, I've noticed the uptick in interest in uranium. Massively, got. yeah. In fact, one of the one of the companies, uh, I think, got in contact with us. They want you to do an interview with them. I think. Oh, Geiger so, Counter. Yeah. Geiger Counter is an investment trust, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, so this is it's, it's, I mean, if you look the chart to look at, I mean, we, we did look at it before yellow cake. Um, yeah, there's power metal resources. Um, it, all commodities, until China starts stimulating, it's going to be hard for commodities. Yeah. You know, they're all... Wow, well, uranium is slightly different. Um uh, and it, in fact, it wasn't Geiger Counts, I suppose. It was uh, manager, the manager of another trust. They have CQS Natural Resources. This is Geiger um, Counts. That's Geiger Counts. Geiger Counts is an investment yeah. trust, so hasn't been as strong uh, as Yellow yeah. Cake, which is a di- di- direct uranium investor. Geiger Counts invests in miners, uranium miners. Oh, okay. Oh, um, look at that. Yeah. The Yellow oh. Cake's gone ballistic. Um, and, yeah. and, and as I said, you know, there's a few, there's a lot going on in, in sort of the nuclear space. You know, you've got, yeah. You've got sort of the, the, the whole anti-nuclear rhetoric that followed Fukushima, which actually saw, you know, uh, a lot of, lot of um, nuclear power stations closed in, in Japan and Germany. Uh, Japan started to reopen them. And there was a sort of newfound interest in, in nuclear and sort of base load energy um, uh, generation. Um, the problem we have is that it comes from, you know, so Canada is a, a fairly big producer of uranium, uh, but then you've got um, regions in Africa. Uh, and one of them is Niger. And they, they threaten to uh, basically, or maybe they even have, um, stop uranium exports to France. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Russia, rumour has it, is still a big uranium export. So despite sanctions, uh, in, including to the US, and they have talked about stopping uranium uh, shipments as well. Stop punching the desk, John. Sorry. Um, uh, <laughs> so, so, yeah, hence, hence, right. hence, right. hence we have this, um, this sudden spike in the uranium price. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. So you can see there, the ones that were in higher lows here, that line, that black line, all the way up. Mm. And then it, it hit that. And then you see you couldn't get it above that previous high. So it consolidated for a while. And now it's broken up again above yeah. these previous, of, uh, you know, these is running nice and strongly there. Uh, but anyway, that's that's um, power metals, um, yeah, the, on the ur- uranium. Yeah. Uranium the other interesting one is that strategic metals. Uh, sorry, yeah. strategic, strategic minerals. Yeah, yeah. Uh, talking of nuclear, they've had a hard time here. After you, uh, they uh, have, since. they have. Well, they, they. Uh, what's their main thing? They, they, I mean, they, I just quite. As miners go, I mean, this one makes money. Um, you know, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, so it's got it's got this sort of uh, stockpile of sort of magnetite. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Which it's which sort of funds its operations. Um, yeah. But what it's done today is uh, so it's got this it's, subsidiary it's magnetite tailings dam in, in that's New the Mexico. One. Yeah, that, it's got other, the it's a, they've got a producer and explorer as well. So, yeah, yeah, so they've got some but, copper yeah. exploration going on. Uh, but yeah. the thing today, this is yeah. worth a look, uh, is um, a deal they've signed uh, to supply uh, materials um, through a subsidiary. Co- yeah, to uh, uh, a I guess nuclear fission technology company. Yeah, yeah. Now, now most oh, nuclear signal. nuclear power is fission. Um, and obviously fusion is where the, the great interest is. And there's been some experiments recently that, that have started to demonstrate that fusion might actually be you know, more po- possible rather than theoretical. Um, and uh, yeah, this, uh, this is a deal to supply tungsten uh, to that project. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, as one of the only high-grade tungsten resources in the UK, Redmore has the potential to mm-hmm. be one of these supplies to that thing. Okay, uh, yeah, it's good news there. They need a bit of good news. They've uh, been hammered for a long time, as you can see from that chart. Look at that. Yep. Literally. And once once again, it goes back to this this idea of uh, you know a lot more mining happening domestically. Yeah. Uh, as part of this sort of whole sort of resource nationalism thing that's going on. Yeah. One of the rises was cellular goods. I don't know what um, King Tide Carbon formed JV with Spring Tide Seaweed. That's got to be one of the best titles I've ever. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> King Tide Carbon forms JV with Spring Tide Seaweed. So um, I don't know anything about this company, do you, John? Uh, no, honest? not really. Yeah, not really. Okay, go and have a look at it. Um, <laughs> that's a classic. I'll go away and look and come back. No, I don't, I don't know. Look, they're definitely downtrend there. Um, but, uh, it's yeah, uh, so, it's a great headline. It's reduced input, transformative potatoes. Yeah, it's not as good. Right as up there with it. it. Growing, cultivating a harvest and help kelp, uh, cultivating multiple species, but they don't cheap. Hmm. Uh, there's another, there's another company that, that's in the seaweed business, Ocean Harvest. Yeah. Uh, Ocean Harvest Technology, yeah, OHT. Uh, Watkins Jones, again, down Oof. 4%. Oh, we yeah, did horrible. mention these yesterday, didn't we? And, uh, you know, um, yeah, it's yeah. Built, to, built to rent, basically, you know, building flats, but it can't make any money out of it. <laughs> yeah, 400 million of revenues and, uh, and, and not a penny in profit. 
Yeah, whilst the current challenging market conditions are set to continue to start 20, well, the group's level of secured revenue for full year 20 is 330 million. There we are. And are they not making any profit? No. No. All right. Okay. Well, that's, that's a very thin margin there. Mm. Um, there's a fallers. Uh, we got that there. Calnex came up there. Yeah, Calnex. Okay. You know what? I was, supply, I was um, telecom testing. testing. Yeah, telecom testing. Who had a profit if, warning? Who had a profit warning? Than, uh, is it who anything a, more boring than telecoms? It's telecom testing. Yeah, and who had a profit warning the other day? It was just involved in telecoms testing. It's Byron. Oh, is it? Yeah, check your read across. Yeah, yeah. So you can see look at that. Oh, you can see how many profits warnings there are. Uh, you know, if yeah. you're in a if you if you're in a sector where you you know other peers are giving profits warnings Quite. and results are coming up on yours, uh, and you've got a big chunk in there, a big percentage of your portfolio. Maybe ease up a little. Yeah, play uh, safe. Wait, wait for the results. <laughs> yeah, because um, it's 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 hard. It, you, what I want, what we should do tomorrow, John, is suggest sectors that are insulated from this downturn, sectors or, or companies that benefit anyway from the downturn, or even you know they help companies save money in some way, become more efficient in some way. That's what we need. Yeah, you know? I know, but even those companies, you know, because then a record falls into that space, and you know, it's just it's, nothing. Nothing feels very safe at the moment. Yeah. It's, uh, uh, but yeah, do, I mean, the, the only thing, what, the, only, the, only sector, the only sector that I, you know, is genuinely defensive at the moment is sadly defence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But saying that though, you know what? You find good sort of like, uh, uh, what was like Destiny Farm and uh, Vector. They are some of the highest risk companies you'd think. Free revenue, clinical trials, all that stuff. Um, but they're, they're rallying. It's like sometimes, you know, they, they, those are risky yeah. sectors, really. It's different, actually, different game, though, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah, a different game. Game. It's a pre revenue company. Yeah, yeah, they are yeah. pre revenue. It's all about hope, high potential at the moment. Uh, IOMART, did, didn't they come up with something okay or, or what? Decent, de fairly decent numbers, you know. Uh, it's yeah. sort of cloud, hybrid cloud. You know, look, a lot of companies don't want to put their. Their data in the public cloud, so so you know they still well, have. Wow, that. a bit of green on the screen from a company actually yeah. you know, producing revenue. Eighteen um, percent. What's the outlook? The positive trading performance is a reflection of the strength of the group's cloud capabilities. Yeah. Uh, uh, the board remains confident in the outlook for the long term prospects of the group. Long term, they say there. Yeah, uh, I did, they, you know, I know, I did. I did, you know I I did like wonder. That. You know, so I don't like that. When they say long term, I don't like that. That's fine. I mean, I, I did wonder whether you know what 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 place a company like IOMart, which is you know relatively small, yeah, in the grand scheme of you know cloud companies, when you you're considering that you know we're talking like Microsoft, Google, Amazon, you know AWS. Um, so so, so you know, I do think you know what what is what place is there in the market for a company like IOMart, which is 175 million market cap. And as I say, it's this hybrid cloud idea. So, you know, companies that want, that don't want to put all their data in the public cloud, that want to use data centers or still, you know, host their own data. So, yeah, so yeah there is a place for it. It's found, an, it's, found its niche. And I, I, I think that's impressive. Um, Dafters Cluck um, says, ETP, Justin, three exclamation marks. This was a watcher for perhaps mere 60% down a day. Overdone, but which tier one holders will be revealed as dumping today? Only 33 million shares in issue and a small free float. Grim. Yeah, yeah. That's what you need to, in this market, there's no point doing these, you know, catch a falling knife trades because you, you can be falling for several, several days. You know, we've yeah. seen that with other companies. Uh, high, Gregory says, high uranium prices should see bigger profits for miners. So gig account, gig accounts should catch up. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, short term, which kind of, short termism sinking in, guys. In what respect? What I'm saying is long termism. You should think about because uh, you don't want to be sitting on one of these fifty percent falls. Uh, you should think longer term. Thinking, I'll wait to the next trade. Well, you've always, you've always months time. Yeah, you got to balance the short and long term. You know, you yeah. can't you can't ignore what's going on around you. Um, so you know, and I'm still still somewhat invested and still yeah. you know holding relatively steady, um, with the exception of British Telecom. Yeah, yeah. Um, sorry, Greg. Um, OBD has got lung cancer blood tests in their pipeline using their Epi Switch platform. Air yeah, competition for lung life, maybe. No, lung life is a lot better than OBD. Easy. <laughs> That's because I hold it. There's no point comparing. This is. They are. You'll see. Lung life will come out with uh, amazing results because they've done. They've done a trial on 125 people already. This yeah. Is 45. So on 151 people already, they'll come out with that. And uh, OBD, it's, OBD does look good, but yeah, I want to see the full. It's, 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 it's not as easy. It's not as easy with lung cancer. Um, 
Where else? Uh, okay, um, that's it. Ibstock, Frontera, Brickability, Michael, uh, Michael Mersh. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Um, I, I, I'm just these things, good companies, put them on your watch list. Uh, put alerts on them, the chart. That's all you do. And you can wait. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, is, if that's a good point, finishing off here uh, on Riffitsoft. Which companies had a profits warning a year ago? Are they recovering? Exactly. No, we're now, we're now at the bottom of the cycle. I think a couple of months now will wash out. It's an amazing valuation plays because you'll see after a while, the figures won't get any worse. The comparisons and the, 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 of, of like for like growth will not. Once they don't get any worse, that's when the market's bottom, and then mm. you start to say because where it go from there, it'll get better eventually. But of course, this will be led to the central bank. Well, the central bank re reduces interest rates. A lot of that is is down to this, isn't it? You know, uh, higher debt costs and all that stuff. So once they start doing that, the markets will start to rally. I think. Uh, that's yeah, it's, it's an interesting question. Uh, and I, and... Uh, how about, I mean, leisure springs to mind as a, as a sector that was, um, was was suffering a year ago. Yeah. And seems to be doing a little better if J.D. Weatherspoon's, you know, recent, recent figure yeah. to go by. So, so yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll have a look, but I think I'm going to have a, No, I, I think it's My instinct takes me towards the leisure sector. Yeah, no, I think that, that, that leisure will recover. We will all recover. Recruitment will recover. You know, all these builders will recover. All of them will. But it, they're all under this, having the same pressures, aren't they, really? They're all suffering mm. the same. And those pressures haven't alle alleviated anyway. They only start to alleviate when the Bank of India starts to, you know, unwind rates. Uh, and like I said, this comparison, like for likes, don't get any worse. Um, okay, he's, I know you like, he's passionate in numbers, John. So he's throwing passionate numbers uh, above pre-pandemic levels for the first time. There we are. Yeah. Five. 59, well, 59.3 million passengers travel through Heathrow this year. Um, there we are. Not turning through Luton today, are they? No. Oh, someone, um, someone said, there's a lot of people saying, that's an EV car. That is, <laughs> car. Turns out it wasn't, it was a diesel car. Was it uh, so, Yeah, people say, I wouldn't buy an EV. Yes, quite a lot of people on, on, on Twitter saying that. I wouldn't buy an EV. Look, it's caught the whole Luton airport uh, on fire. It apparently wasn't it was a diesel car. Um, John, what do you, what do you, I have you down as a, a, a laid back hippie wearing Birkenstocks? <laughs> They're floating today. Uh, do you wear, do you have no, Birkenstocks? I, no, no, I bet you not. do. Cashmere top, Birkenstocks. Um, no, I'm flip flop. I'm a flip flop guy. <laughs> They're listing today, right? $46 there. They'd be roughly valued at 8.6 billion. There's only two companies valued more than the shoe space. That's Nike and some other called Decker. It's extraordinary, isn't massive. it? Yeah, and so they overtake, overtake Crocs, all those kind of things. And, so, and yet, they went out of fashion books after a while, but now they're back in fashion now because some of the influencers have been wearing them. And so the company, which traces roots back to an 18th century cobbler, found its first fans among hippie types in the 1960s who were one of the company's emphasis on flexible but sturdy support. That's That strikes me as your kind of footwear, John. Flexible but sturdy. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so winter winter is coming to Suffolk, so the wellies are coming out soon. Yeah, yeah. Um uh, that's yeah. it. There's a lot of stuff out today. Uh avoid profit warnings. Just take your time, wait until they release news, and then you know, read that because nothing takes off in this market anyway. Unless they exceed by super amounts, which doesn't tend to happen in this market, the share price will not take off. Take your time, wait for you know, trade up this to come out, financial results to come out, and then after you read that, oh, do you know what? Reacts. I've oh, just had a course. thought. A company that did have some profit warnings a year ago, yeah, Dr. Martins, talking to Bir oh, yeah. Birkenstock. There's yeah, horrors. Uh, it takes value, yeah. And in fact, but also, it, it's not as simple as how do you, what is it? What is it? Docs, is it? Docs, yeah. Docs. But the problem is, it's not simple because they kept the market quite pricey, didn't they? Uh, at the top of the market, they said they're, yeah. yeah at 423. They've had a couple of savage nothing. profit warnings, so yeah, yeah there's there is there is one example. Yeah. Still not recovered. All of that fake break that's dead to that broke above the 200 day moving average. Yeah, boosh. Higher though, you could just put a stop loss in there and then down again. Yeah. You should wait. That, that was probably a trade update there on November yeah. 22nd. And I'd uh, say, so wait for the trading update or the final results. And that's why I will not be investing in Birkenstock. Yeah. Fashion, fickle. Yeah, no, exactly. Uh, thank you, everyone. Don't forget, hit that subscribe button, uh, like, and share it. Share it with everyone you know and people you don't know. And, um, We'll be back tomorrow. Cheers. Speak then. Bye-bye. See you later.